What's up? This is Jay Dizzle, Liberation Minded Media. Sunday, let's go to church. So, as you can see by the name of this title, Did Jay Z Sell His Soul to the Illuminati? That's going to be the discussion. Before we even start this discussion, let me go back a little bit. I remember years ago when I first started getting on YouTube, there was a couple YouTube channels. There was this one white dude who would make YouTube channel that would make YouTube videos where he would claim every symbol every symbolism that represented African culture was of the devil. So the pyramid was of the devil. The eye of Haru was of the devil. Everything that represented our culture just happened to be devil worshiping or satanic in some kind of way. He didn't say it like that, but basically every symbol that he would show would be an African symbol and he would associate it with devil worshiping 666, something of that nature. And he would also highlight and spotlight black entertainers or black people who have made it to be successful and always associating them with selling their soul, doing sacrifices, blood rituals, something evil would be associated with it. So as a result, what I've noticed is a lot of black people, one of them named the forerunner, they would mimic these videos. They would take his material and turn it into their own videos where the same thing would happen. Anything that was black, anything that was African in culture, any black person who made it to be successful would have to be worshiping the devil, selling their soul, doing blood rituals, and the conscious woke community jumped right on it. Now, that's interesting to me, right? Because the conscious community is always boasting about how black people are original. The black man and woman is God. We're kings. We're, we're, we excel at everything. We're, we're the best. We're the cream of the crop. We created all forms of music. We are the most talented. This is like the rhetoric that you hear in the conscious community. But do y'all really believe it? Because this is this is what I say. And this is why a lot of times I do troll. I do challenge people who are religious or spiritualists or whatever type of uh, spirituality or, or ideology you practice. I challenge you with the question, do you really believe it? Because from my opinion, from my observation, I don't think that most of y'all really believe it. I don't believe that most of you Israelites really believe what you teach and what you preach. I don't believe that most of you comedic scholars really believe what you preach. I don't believe most of you Moors, Christians, Muslims really believe what you're saying or what you're telling us. Because if you believe what you're telling us and you believe that God is the greatest and the ancestors are with us, then every time a black person got six, gets successful, you wouldn't associate it with them having to sell their soul to the devil. Because in essence, what you're really saying is God isn't real or God isn't powerful enough or the ancestors or whatever you believe in isn't powerful enough to take a brother from the projects in Brooklyn and turn them into a billionaire. What you're really saying is that these artists that make it don't have God given talents and didn't work hard to get to where they got. They had to sell them their souls to the devil. And that's ridiculous because we don't take that same stance for the Elon Musk of the world. We see we'll associate white billionaires with being hardworking. They grinded, got it out the mud. But when it comes to our own, they had to do something bad. And I think a lot of that comes from insecurity and lack of confidence. Because if you're on mind, you can't fathom how someone could make it from nothing to be a billionaire or be highly successful. Because you may not be able to do so. Or you didn't do so. So in order to comfort your own mind, well, that's because they participate in some Illuminati, Illuminati sexual ritual or blood ritual or worship their devil, the devil or sold their soul to Satan. 
So isn't it interesting how anything that's associated with our greatness has to be evil? Yet you go to work every day for a, jo- a boss you don't like doing a job you don't like that you can't stand underpaid and you don't associate that with selling your soul. Like you're literally going to do something you don't want to do every day, long hours, sacrificing time away from your family to do something you don't want to do, but that's not selling your soul. But someone who grinded and does something that they love is selling their soul. To me, that's just an interesting dynamic. And it's one that I wouldn't, assume would come from those who say that they love themselves, loves them people, understand the greatness of our people and understand the power of God. See, why don't we give credit to God for the, for his glory or her glory or its glory for being able to take people who came from nothing and turn them into great success? Why don't we take inspiration like, like, it's interesting because when Jay-Z was rapping about selling drugs and big pimping, moving kilos, slapping bitches, when he was talking about all that ratchet shit, we didn't have any smoke for him. But once he bossed up to billionaire status and started giving the game, because that's really what he's been doing. If you listen to his last few albums, he's given the game. He's given game on a high level. Doesn't mean you have to agree with everything. Doesn't mean that he's perfect. But I'm saying he's giving game. And all of a sudden now people hate him. Like we literally just seen little Nas X push the homosexual agenda, come out with a Satan shoe with human blood in it. And he got less smoke than a Jay-Z. Make that make sense. We don't give smoke to these mumble rappers who are pushing death culture, wearing purses and dresses, or these female rappers that are selling sex, sexualizing our babies. Many of them have very little talent, and the only reason they're on is because they're half naked. Talking about encouraging our women to sell sex, to not be faithful. They get very little smoke. To me, that's just interesting. To me, it's just backwards. To me, it's a reflection of self-hate and envy. Because all of, all of y'all out there that's hating on Jay-Z right now was bumping his shit. He didn't get to the where he's at because we didn't support him. He got there precisely because we did support him. So why are we afraid of greatness to the point to where we demonize anything that's great, but we celebrate mediocrity? If you're if you're struggling, you you ain't made it yet. You, we'll support you as a people. But if you make it, all of a sudden we turn on you. Now listen, I'm not a, a Jay Z fanboy, but this is bigger than just like Jay Z and some of these other cats who have made it. This speaks to the mentality, and it's really something that comes from propaganda and cointel, counterintelligence. Because who's really starting these these rumors and these ideas that demonize those of us who make it? Like, Jay-Z does a lot for the community. He's helped with a lot of protests. He's helped a lot of people stay out of jail. He's helped... A lot of people build wealth. He's built a school in Brooklyn, Marcy Projects. A financial literacy school at that. But we don't talk about that. Oh, he's throwing up a triangle. He's throwing up the Illuminati. And what the hell is the Illuminati? See, one thing about the conscious community and those who become conscious, quote unquote, because I don't really believe you're conscious. What I notice is, and, and I get it. Like if you just learned a whole bunch of information in a short period of time and you just really expanded your knowledge and your understanding of things, it's easy 
to come up with come up with the impression that you know it all and now you're in a position to judge people. I'll use the analogy like this. When the Twin Towers were hit on 9-11 and the narrative was these planes hit the building, it was an attack from the Middle East and um, the, 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 ga or the gas from the airplanes, the jet fuel made the buildings crumble down and it was just perpetuated on the media 24-7 and it was so shocking and traumatic that people just, you know, for the most part went along with the story. Later on, when science came out to disprove that theory, a lot of people were shocked. It was like, oh shit, yeah, when you really think about it, you really break it down, you really do the science, when you really do the engineering aspect of it, it's impossible for that story to be true. So when you see the contrast between what you were told and what science actually would prove, once you realize something like that could happen, then anything's on the table. Then it's easy to, be, to believe any type of goofy little, anything goofy that just sounds so radical and conscious and woke. And that's what I see happening a lot. I've seen people who I know in real life who, who listen to some of these very influential, charismatic speakers. And they'll believe anything that they say. You got people out there really saying that the Underground Railroad was an actual railroad underground and that Harriet Tubman was not a real person. I've heard these kind of things. Slavery was, wasn't real and the Civil War was about a labor dispute and we weren't really slaves. See, these are the kind of things that you can, you can fool people who just are awakening into their conscience because they'll believe anything. They'll become sponges. And the more radical it sounds, the more they're likely to believe it. And this is part of propaganda. This is part of my control. And don't think that propaganda doesn't affect you because you say you're woke. Anything that's perpetuated enough, if you expose yourself to it, it can sway you. Your subconscious doesn't know the, 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 the difference between truth and not truth. That's why when you watch certain movies, you know it's a movie, but it can make you sad. Because your subconscious doesn't know that that's not real. So you're watching a movie, watching your favorite person who you just fell in love with on the screen get shot down. You went to the movie sitting down knowing it's a movie, knowing these are actors, knowing these are not real things that are actually happening, but your subconscious doesn't know. So if something's plugged and fed and pushed into your subconscious over and over, it doesn't matter if you're woke or not. Your subconscious will start to soak up those messages and as a result, your subconscious runs your conscious, not the other way around. So we got to be careful with some of these messages that we perpetuate. Because what we're really saying to ourselves and each other on a subconscious level is that we don't believe that someone who looks like us can really make it without white people's approval, assistance, or without doing something horrifically evil to do so. I've seen videos that claim that James Brown went to the crossroads and made a deal with the devil. And that's how he became famous. Now, James Brown is the hardest working, most talented person of his era. But instead of accrediting his hard work and his talent and maybe the blessings of God to his success, people would rather associate that with the devil. So on another subconscious level, you're saying that the devil is more powerful than God and that all blessings really come from the devil. And by doing that, what you're trying to really say is that you're so righteous and moral that you couldn't do those kind of things. So you're, you will remain broke and unsuccessful or mediocre at best. Because in order to take it to the next level, you would have to do some things that are immoral. And it's sad. We think way too small and too little of each other. That's really what it boils down to. Because you same conscious people aren't running around saying the same thing about billionaires who made it. You work for Amazon. This dude's a billionaire. You call him a self-made billionaire who's just a genius. Elon Musk is just a genius. All these corporations and owner of these corporations that you work for and that you shop with every single day 
you don't have any smoke for them. But if one of us comes up, it has to be because they did something evil. And this is orchestrated. Why is it orchestrated? Well, let's think about it. Why weren't we taught our greatness in school? We were taught everyone else was great. George Washington, great. Andrew Jackson, great. Christopher Columbus, great. Didn't tell us our greatness. Didn't tell us the things that we overcame and invented. They didn't tell us none of these things. Why couldn't they tell us these things? Because you can't say that we're inferior and at the same time show us our greatness and how we have overcame and even surpassed and or invented or started or engineered everything that we enjoy today, including the wealth that built this country. So you can't say that we're inferior and then show us how we have eclipsed civilization for millennium. You can't tell us that we are inferior, but at the same time, tell us that everything that Europeans learned, they learned from us. So because this has been programmed into the algorithm for centuries, and because stringy haired Jesus, whether you believe in it or not, this has been programmed into our subconscious. You may know better on a conscious level, but your subconscious may not really have grasped that yet. So their God, and the only way we can make it is if they bless us and allow us to, rather than we figured out a way to make it with nothing and God assisted and guided us or the ancestors assisted and guided us or the talent and hard work just paid off. Or sometimes it was all those things plus we got lucky. We got to start thinking a whole different way. We have to have a whole new rebirth of our consciousness. This conscious community has been saturated with haters and agents who are purposely feeding, or even if it's not on purpose, the effect is the same. Feeding us with self-hate, doubt, perpetuating propaganda that doesn't allow us to celebrate our greatness and build off of that. Think about that. You're looking at a picture right now of a pyramid with a white person's eye on it and Jay-Z throwing up the rock, which essentially also is a pyramid. And we're saying that that's devil worshiping. But who told you that the pyramid and the eye of Haru and all that was evil? Who told you that everything that associates to African spirituality, African greatness is evil? And then let's think about what that really means. Because if that's evil, it's evil to who? Who is it a threat to? Is it a threat to us for us to awaken in our consciousness and our greatness? Or is it a threat to white supremacy that only is able to maintain itself by pushing the ideal that they're superior to us? Anything that we do is inferior or anything that we believe is inferior. And this is the same reason why they told you voodoo was bad. Although I've never seen any wars over voodoo and make of people uh, making you accept voodoo. I have seen Christianity and Islam slapped, slaughtered by the tens of thousands. I have seen Christianity and Islam being used to justify over a thousand years of enslavement of darker people. So a lot of times it's really subjective. What's evil to one isn't evil to the other. See, back in slave days, they would tell you that you had dreptomania, a psychological disorder, if you wanted to be free. Because to them, your freedom was evil because it compromised and it was a detriment to the institution of slavery, which is what built great wealth and power for them. So to go against white supremacy to them is evil. So it's a matter of perspective. Liberation Minded Media, Jay Dizzle. Let me know what you think. Peace.